Good morning. Are we ready to face the brand new weekend? Fantastic. Let's do this. Let's encounter our resurrected Christ. Amen. Holy Spirit, God, come. Convict the scripture to us that we may actually not only understand but live this out, Lord. That we encounter the Spirit, the resurrected Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, by the time uh, you uh, listen to this, I will probably be out of the COVID-19, hopefully several days ago. But I'm just recording this, pre-recording, hopefully, because I got a lot of time during COVID uh, quarantine. Only really strange thing is that I cannot really smell coffee drinking sewage water. <clears throat> but, um, oh, thank God that uh, it's fourth day of quarantine and I have not given this to anyone in, in the house yet. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I just need to get out. Uh, COVID testing tomorrow, probably. <clears throat> this is word of the Lord, John chapter 20. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene, went to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to them, they have taken away the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter therefore went out and the other disciple and were, doing, were going to the tomb. So they both ran together and the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying there, yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb and saw the linen cloth lying there and the handkerchief, handkerchief, handkerchief that had been round his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who came into the tomb first went in also, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not know the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again to their own homes. Hmm. What well, we find, <clears throat> Jesus dies. Now the first day of the week, Early in the morning, before dawn, Mary Magdalene uh, went to see the tomb early, make devotion. You know, it's uh, motherly love. I want to make sure. And finds that the tomb is open. So what do they do? What does she do? Uh, she runs to Peter and John. Upon the hearing the news, both Peter and John takes off. The, the scripture, the other disciple is John is talking about himself. They run. And John outruns Peter, comes to the tomb. He stoops in, but he doesn't go in. You know, that he's that kind of a guy, right? He's very cautious. Uh, it took him 50 years to write this gospel. It's very thoughtful, uh, not impulsive. Whereas Peter, who comes later, but without any hesitation, go right in. And what did they see? The fabric that was covered Jesus' body and his head folded separate location. Huh. His body is really gone. By seeing, they believe that body is gone. They did not believe Jesus resurrected yet. They simply said, oh, body is gone. Where could it be? There are four uh, theory about uh, the empty tomb. And this was a debate uh, that I wrote 
about in my paper, my first philosophy paper, The Resurrection of Jesus Christ, uh, because Professor Firebrand, the professor of, the, of philosophy at Berkeley at the time, was so adamant that Jesus never resurrected. And his first word out of his mouth was, Jesus never resurrected. In 20 weeks, he argued why Jesus didn't resurrect. There are four, four arguments. Number one, re resuscitation. <laughs> um, Jesus, after all that they've done to him, whipping him, piercing him, <laughs> after all that they've done, uh, they, they said that he resurrected in the middle of the night, came back to life, got up, See, that's why that we should have broken the bones. We could not run away. We resurrected and then start moving that uh, stone that several men had to push together to cover and ran. Uh, Terry, if you're a rationalist and you, you consider to be intellectual and you could really believe that, as an existentialist, we could say, why don't we do that to you? See, if you could do that, you know, <laughs> proof. It's not, that's unlikely. Secondly is the, uh, it, the body was stolen, uh, that the enemy stole it to sh basically prove that he's dead, right? Make sure. <laughs> or uh, the disciples stole the body in order to become a, a propagate this, the way. And this is what Firebrand was leaning toward, the disciples. You know, if, if Christianity would not have happened if John and Peter uh, flipped out and then because they want their three years of uh, uh, blindly following this young man as rabbi, they want to justify, they want their three years to be redeemed. So guess what they did? They fabricate this, but that's also unlikely. I mean, these guys were in so much fear. <laughs> They're in upper room, lock the door. Why would they voluntarily want to die? Right? But that, that's one other theory. One, the other theory is the earthquake or natural explanation. The earth, there was an earthquake, it cracked open the bottom stone rolled away and bodies sank. Well, maybe that's why John and uh, John is writing this more specifically about who went first, what they saw in details, because he said uh, uh, the cloth was laying on one side and the headband was laying on the other, very specific for for that theory to work, you have to also uh, buy into the fourth one. Fourth one is hallucination theory, that the uh, disciples are hallucinating because they're traumatized. You know, they're going through post-traumatic syndrome, PTS, post-traumatic syndrome. And so because of this incredible thing that happened in their lives, they cannot justify, they are now hallucinating. Uh, and so why is Dr. Firebrand, professor of philosophy, spends 20 weeks trying to disapprove resurrection of Jesus Christ? Because Christianity really is uh, based on this message. The resurrection message is the core message not some fringe message or uh, side message or yeah, 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 you could, uh, you don't really need that. It's like, you know, side mirror in your car. Right? It would be nice to have it. Back mirror, oh, yeah, it's nice to have. You know what I mean? Bumper, yeah, that's nice to have. It has some value, but can you drive a car without bumper and side mirror? Yeah, of course, as long as there's engine. Right? So the resurrection message is the engine. 
that what that's what's keeping our faith running. It's going to places. Listen to this. John 11, 25, Jesus himself <laughs> said that I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. Right? Jesus said it very clearly. He is a resurrection. And finally, when Holy Spirit makes touchdown, they fill with the Holy Spirit God, they remind him, remind them of the teaching that Jesus did. So this is what Peter says, John Acts 1, 20, 22. For said Peter, it is written in the book of Psalms, may his place be deserted, let him no one to dwell in it, and may another take his place of leadership. Therefore, it is necessary to choose one of the men who had been with us the whole time the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from John's baptism to the time when Jesus was taken off from us. For one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. The central message of the church, the 3,000 were added to that day, is the resurrection message. So Peter is saying that, yeah, if you are not certain about this, then you cannot be an apostle. Right? <coughs> what about afterwards? Peter and John is being arrested, and Peter and John, who is in this story, saw the resurrection firsthand, and of course, eventually meets him at the upper room and all that. Acts 4, 1 through 4, the priest and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people and the proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They seized Peter and John, and because he was evening, they put them in jail until the next day. But many who heard the message believed, and the number of men grew to about 5,000. What message? Right? For spiritual law? No. Uh, prosperity gospel? Hey, man, you could drive Ferrari and live in a $10 million home. God is good. No. The resurrection of the dead. That's the message of the church. Right? Jesus and the resurrection. That's a central message. That's the engine. What about Paul? That Paul, Paul picks it up. In Romans 1, declare the power to be with the Son of God by his resurrection from the dead. Jesus Christ, our Lord. That's how he introduced. You know, Paul, servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God. And then he says, the resurrection, Jesus Christ, resurrection of the dead, Jesus Christ, my Lord, our Lord, right? And then Romans 6, 5, 6. If we have been united with him like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. See, Paul also understood the power of the resurrection. <coughs> Wow, the fever is coming on. In the resurrection. So he understood Paul that it's a central, central, central. And then, of course, 1 Corinthians 15, 12 through 19. And I'm pretty, pretty sure that I'll be teaching 1 Corinthians now. But this is the argument, the key verse argument on resurrection. But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless. And so is your faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witness about God, for we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all men. <laughs> it's like, 
why, 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 you know, Paul said to the church of Corinth that there are some of you uh, babblers who talk nonsense about, yeah, it's cool, I'm following Jesus, but yeah, Jesus, he's a cool guy, but could be man, he could be God, he never resurrected. And so Paul is adamant that make resurrection the central theme of your faith, because without it, it's futile. It's, we will be pitied that we are idiots. We, are, we, we talk about uh, uh, the life. Without Jesus' resurrection, Holy Spirit, God cannot come. If Holy Spirit, God is not here, we can have no power to live victoriously. That's the whole point. Amen? Well, let this day be the day that you experience uh, Holy Spirit, God, the resurrected Christ. Be victorious. Amen. Amen. See you guys tomorrow.